Well, good morning. I'm not sure who's out there yet, but uh, good morning to you on this quite chilly Friday morning. The end of the week is almost here, and tomorrow everything will still be the same. It's quite interesting, isn't it, being a nation in isolation? I'm not quite sure what's happening. So, here we are, doing the stuff, playing, no music this morning, I thought it would be nice to just start, well, with me. If you have any prayer needs, if there's anything you would like prayed for. If you know of any needs, I've got face masks, I can now visit people who are at risk without putting them at any more risk. So the opportunities for ministry and for care are expanding. So seriously, if I can be of help, if Wendy or I can do anything, if we can, as a church, stand with you during this time of COVID-19 coronavirus, then we are here to, to serve, to be the people who will do whatever we need to do to make you secure, to help you get through it. So, good morning, one and all. Let's begin our morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy, to you be praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast. Not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all, in living he lives to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. So let us pray with one heart and mind. A moment of silence for reflection. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 115, and I'm afraid it's me at the moment, Wendy's had to take Gabriella to work in the care home. To you, O Lord, to you alone, O Lord, to you alone, and not to us, 
must glory be given because of your constant love and faithfulness. Why should the nations ask us, where is your God? Our God is in heaven. He does whatever he wishes. Their gods are made of silver and gold, formed by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, and eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, and noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, and feet but cannot walk. They cannot make a sound. May all who made them and those who trust in them become like the idols they've made. Trust in the Lord, you people of Israel. He helps you and protects you. Trust in the Lord, you priests of God. He helps you and protects you. Trust in the Lord, all you that worship him. He helps you and protects you. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless the people of Israel and all the priests of God. He will bless everyone who honours him, the great and the small alike. May the Lord give you children, you and your descendants. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Heaven belongs to the Lord alone. But he gave the earth to us humans. The Lord is not praised by the dead, by anyone who goes down to the land of silence. But we, the living, will give thanks to him now and forever. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Psalm 149 Praise the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord. Praise him in the assembly of his faithful people. Be glad, Israel, because of your creator. Rejoice, people of Zion, because of your king. Praise his name with dancing. Play drums and harps in praise of him. The Lord takes pleasure in his people. He honours the humble with victory. The Lord's people rejoice in their triumph and sing joyfully all night long. Let them shout aloud as they praise God with their sharp swords in their hands. To defeat the nations and to punish the peoples. To bind their kings in chains, their leaders in chains of iron. To punish the nations as God has commanded. This is the victory of God's people. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Exodus 13, verse 17 to 14, verse 14. When the king of Egypt let the people go, God did not take them by the road that goes up the coast to Philistia, although that was the shortest way. God thought, I don't want the people to change their minds and return to Egypt when they, they see that they are going to have to fight. Instead, he led them in a roundabout way through the desert toward the Red Sea. The Israelites were armed for battle. Moses took the body of Joseph with him, as Joseph had made the Israelites solemnly promise to do. Joseph had said, when God rescues you, you must carry my body with you from this place. <coughs> oh, excuse me. The Israelites left Succoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. During the day, the Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud to show them the way. And during the night, he went in front of them in a pill pillar of fire to give them light so that they could always travel day and night. The pillar of cloud was always in front of the people during the day and the pillar of fire at night. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to turn back and camp in front, in front of Pi Hahiroth between Migdol and the Red Sea near Baal Zephon. 
The king will think that the Israelites are wandering around in the country and are closed in by the desert. I will make him stubborn and he will pursue you and my victory over the king and his army will bring me honour. Then the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. The Israelites did as they were told. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had escaped, he and his officials changed their minds and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites escape, and we have lost them as our slaves. The king got his war chariot and his army ready. He set out with all his chariots, including the 600 finest, commanded by their officers. The Lord made the king stubborn, and he pursued the Israelites, who were leaving triumphantly. The Egyptian army, with all the horses, chariots and drivers, pursued them and caught up with them where they were camped by the Red Sea, by the Red Sea, near pi Hahiroth and Baal-Zephon. When the Israelites saw the king and his army marching against them, they were terrified and cried out to the Lord for help. They said to Moses, weren't there any graves in Egypt? Did you have to bring us out here in the desert to die? Look at what you have done by bringing us out of Egypt. Didn't we tell you before we left this, that this would happen? We told you to leave us alone and let us go on being slaves of the Egyptians. It would be better to be slaves there than to die here in the desert. Moses answered, don't be afraid. Stand your ground and you will see what the Lord will do to save you today. You will never see these Egyptians again. The Lord will fight for you. <coughs> And all you have to do is keep still. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 1 Corinthians 15, 35 to 50. Someone will ask, how can the dead be raised to life? What kind of body will they have? You fool. When you plant a seed in the ground, it doesn't sprout to life unless it dies. And what you plant is a bare seed, perhaps a grain of wheat or some other grain, not the full-bodied plant that will later grow up. God provides that seed with the body he wishes. He gives each seed its own proper body. And the flesh of living beings is not all the same kind of flesh. Human beings have one kind of flesh, animals another, birds another, and fish another. And there are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. The beauty that belongs to heavenly bodies is different from the beauty that belongs to earthly bodies. The sun has its own beauty, the moon another beauty, and the stars a different beauty. And even among stars there are different kinds of beauty. This is how it will be when the dead are raised to life. When the body is buried, it's mortal. When raised, it will be immortal. When buried, it is ugly and weak. When raised, it will be beautiful and strong. When buried, it is a physical body. When raised, it will be a spiritual body. There is, of course, a physical body. So there has to be a spiritual body. For the scripture says the first man, Adam, was created a living being. But the last Adam is the life-giving spirit. It is not the spiritual that comes first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first Adam made of earth came from the earth. The second Adam came from heaven. Those who belong to the earth are like the one who was made of earth. Those who are of heaven are like the one who came from heaven. Just as we wear the likeness of the man made of earth, so will we wear the likeness of the man from heaven. What I mean, friends, is that what is made of flesh and blood cannot share in God's kingdom, and what is mortal cannot possess immortality. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, Where O oh death, death, is, is your, your sting? sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death, death is swallowed up, up in victory. victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, Where O oh death, death, is your sting? sting? We shall not all sleep but we will all be changed. Death, death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? The Lord, the Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised the bold to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory, Glory to, to the God, Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. The, the Lord, Lord is risen from, from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon, upon the tree. The tree. Alleluia. Alleluia. So we come to a, a time of prayer when we give thanks for the day ahead and we offer our intercessions. We pray and stand in the gap for those that we have concerns about. We bring to God the things that mm. are on our minds and hearts. So we encourage you to pray where you are. Father, we give thanks for this day, for the change in weather, which just makes life a little more interesting. As we head towards the weekend, for many of us there's not a lot of change, like each day just rolls into the next. But Father, we know that each day is given as a gift from you. So help us to use this day in that way. To look for opportunities to be a blessing. To spend time with you. To see through your eyes. To look at our own lives and the changes that we've been forced to make and to find what is good in those changes to thank you for that and to hold on to them yes. and Lord as we face another three weeks of <coughs> being locked in we pray that our hearts would not despair but that we would Cherish the opportunity to slow down, to take time, to do the things that we've been putting off because we haven't had the time.
Father, may we find opportunities to speak to people, to speak to neighbours over the fence. To maybe sit in our front gardens and speak to people passing by, keeping mm. to the social distancing regulations. But Lord, help us to be not despondent and frightened as the Israelites were in the desert, but to look to you and know that though this may, it may feel like a desert experience, you will show us your wonders and you will do great things through this time. Forgive us eyes to see, Lord. We ask in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Father, for the day that lies ahead, I pray that you would give us wisdom in our engagements. Father, I thank you that with face masks I'm now able to go and do other things. I can safely go into the company of people with my gloves and my masks. I won't infect them, they won't infect me, and I can take your blessing, which is never going to be anything but a blessing. But Father, today is a day when I will engage with those who have lost loved ones. Some through old age, some through natural things, some through COVID-19 and some tragically through accident. And Father, before me I have four to a hundred and one, life just beginning, life lived long, for the youngest I pray for the family in losing a child, the pain of loss being immense, being devastating, the separation from loved ones at a time like that causing even more stress. For the other end, a hundred plus, I thank you Lord for a life not only live well, but a life that could do a service with me and not need glasses to read the sheet. Dying at the top of their game. So Lord, today and I go through my funeral ministry. Help me never to lose sight of the person. Help me to never lose sight of the ministry of Christ to each Christian, each one of us. And Father, as I go through this day, I pray for the young and vulnerable. For it seems to me the older are doing quite well. <laughs> that some of the older people are coping so well with this coronavirus situation. That if they catch it, they've come through. But Lord, for the people under threat with health conditions. For the children with downs or CP or other issues. Lord, keep this virus from their door. Protect them, surround their family with great support. And Father, for those who care for loved ones, for those who care for loved ones who can't be reached. And I think of Diane Murray, who is so far away from her family who care. I think of those who live in Tamworth but can't enter the care homes where their loved ones are. Father, I pray for all who are frustrated by the locking in, by the shutting down, by the social precautions we take. And as it extends for three more weeks, help us to take up the baton of prayer, to pick up our phones, to be help love provision wherever we can. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. prayer. Father, we pray for our world and its needs, mm. which are many. Yes. Top of the list at the moment for many people is the COVID-19 pandemic. And we pray, for Father, for every nation where this virus is taking its toll, mm. is taking lives, yes. for the different approaches that have been taken to try and contain its spread and the loss of life. Yeah. Father, we pray for the leaders of those nations that the decisions they make would be wise and compassionate. Yeah. And we pray for them as they are undoubtedly experiencing the stress of the responsibility that they face. Some better than others, some very publicly melting down. Whatever we may think of politicians and leaders, Lord, they carry a heavy burden. And so we pray for them. We lift their arms. We stand with them. We pray that you will be with them, Lord, yes. to strengthen them, to comfort mm. them. Give them good advisors, and may they listen to your voice yeah. as you speak through your people. And Father, we pray for the other needs of the world, because they still exist, even though they're swept out of the news for the poverty, for the famine, for the fear that still exists in so many places, fear of their own government, fear of conflict, fear of other groups, fear of kidnappings and imprisonment. Lord, it's easy to forget what's going on mm. around our world when we're so caught up in our own situation. Yes. But this is a time when we can find out, we have the time to find out what's going on around the world and to lift those things to you in prayer. So we do that now, Lord. We lift to you the Middle East, the place of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Mm. We lift to you Egypt, which has been in our reading so prominently recently. The political unrest that has been quite prevalent in that country even since the Arab Spring. Lord, we pray for your church yes. in those areas of the world where it is difficult to praise you, mm. where it is difficult to be identified as one of yours. We pray for your protection for our brothers and sisters yes. and that their witness would bring others to faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the witness and work of the church today. Yes, we pray for its ministers, 
we pray for the members of the church. Although, Lord, we don't have members, we just have brothers and sisters, which is much more fun. And so for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, for our brothers and sisters in the places we live, for our friends and family from our congregations, and Lord, for our friends and growing family from this congregation, Lord, may each of us know your love, your provision, your peace today. May we step out, if that's what we can do, confidently. May we step out with a smile on our face and love in our hearts for all that we meet. And Lord, as we get into our cars with the smiles that will soon be taken away by the driving around us, as we enter into the queue and wonder how long it will take to get into the shop. May we smile at those around. May we engage them from a safe distance. May they see in us a glimmer of hope, or a glimmer of something positive. May we reflect your light and love in the lives of all those we meet today. Yes, and Father, we pray for those who make decisions in the churches. We pray for our archbishops and for one who's leaving and one who's about to come in the shape of York. But we pray for Justin especially as he tries to do the right thing. And Lord, people point fingers whenever you do things. You can't please all the people, even some of the time, it seems. But Lord, I thank you for those who take upon themselves the burden of leadership. Yes, Lord. We might not like who they are. We may not like our Prime Minister. We may not like our MP. We may not like our councillors. We might not like our vicar. I've seen him in the mirror. I know what he looks like. And Father, even if we don't like them, you call us to love them and to pray for them and to lift them up. So we as church pray for the world around us, for our governments, for our leaders, for the people who make us cheer and the people who make us cheer. Lord, may your church today be immense in every way. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And where you are, just take a moment or two to lift to God the things that concern you this morning, the people that concern you, the things that we haven't mentioned that you wish we had. You mention them now and bring them before the Lord. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned 
and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May God our Redeemer show us compassion and love. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I don't know about you, but do you ever get that moment when you want to run around in circles shouting hallelujah and you get so excited about God that it just bubbles out of you and then you realise standing in the queue as the probably wasn't the place to do it. <laughs> well, that's me and that's where I'm at and I love this. I hate the situation we're in and three more weeks People are talking about being locked in, in their heads. And our job is to set them free in their heads, even if we can't let them run around the streets. And I was asked a question yesterday, so I thought I'd be a bit helpful this morning to give you a thought for the weekend. When you listen to us do this, Wendy's the one with the deeper voice. <laughs> OK. Because... Uh, We're a bit like Sonny and Cher. <laughs> Watch out for that tree. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. Thank you ever so much for being part with us. Look forward to bumping into you somewhere, waving across the other side of a street, perhaps, or talking on the phone. But anything we can do, don't forget to shout. Have a great morning. Be blessed.